And now, today, a pensioner. The retirement presentation ceremony in the depot canteen. A full turnout of all of our colleagues. For the four of us retiring, Donald, Bert, and Mr. Smythe, who caused such anxiety with his stomach disorders. Mr. Cunningham's speech, most fitting for the occasion, the place will not be the same without us. His very words. The men had held a collection for each of us. A six-function digital watch with alarm. An art present for me, with Mr. Cunningham speaking so highly of my exemplary punctuality record. He'd been so proud of me, Mali. Mr. Cunningham's tribute to me. If you've been sitting with the other wives, watching their husband's retirement presentation. I shook hands with a man from the GLC. You wish. You're not on my own. You'd have been so proud if you could have been here, Mali. And our girls. Are you still here, Susan? Sister. I don't think there's much to be achieved by your staying, do you? It can't be long now, and then it'll all be over. Yes. No matter how long one does this job, no matter how professional we should be, sometimes one patient... She has had so much dignity. I just... When she dies. You've done everything possible to ease herself. We haven't done everything possible. The time she had to wait for radiotherapy. As nurses. We're nurses, not politicians. Last night she called my name. I was sitting here, holding her hand. She said, where's Susan? I said, I'm here. She said, if you're here, everything will be all right. Everything's going to be all right. Susan, I think it'd be sensible if you should go now for a couple of hours. Come back later if you really feel you must. I got to go anyway. Me dad retired today. He's taking me out for a meal. Then you go. He brought a sock in his feet and I brought a sock. The suit is new. I bought it especially for the retirement presentation in the canteen at the station. Many of my colleagues were in suits for the occasion. It was so strange, Mally, not to see them in their uniforms. <laughs> After 30 years of seeing them, <laughs> their wives were with them. <laughs> they have their arms. And <laughs> oh, Lord, Molly. I wish she was there holding my arm. I'm being so damn proud of what Mr. Cunningham said about my exemplary punctuality record. I wish I'm not on my own now. Tonight. This celebration with our daughters. I wish tonight I could ask you, Mally, that what I'm going to do, that it is right. And I wish to Jesus that you hadn't died, Mally. And that you were here with me tonight to time it down, tie you. And I wish you were going to come home with me, home to Jamaica.
I'm here, Dad. Susie, my choosy, choosy Susie. Hey, well, you look, I mean, <laughs> well. Oh. oh, what's the smell, Dad? The smell? What's this? Oh, some of the girls at the office depot, as retirement present, they bought me this bottle of cologne. You like the smell? I'll wash it off. Don't you like it? There's certainly a lot of it. This a new suit. I bought it for the do I've been to this afternoon. Look, I'm sorry. And I for the party tonight. It's good to see you. You're here. Mm. Light the scarf. She made it. Mrs. Dwyer. Mrs. Dwyer next door. When she heard I retiring and going home, she knitted it. Well, anyway, like a present. I got you some flowers. She always asks after you girls. Did you wave at her when you come in? Because even now, she's at the window waiting to wave. I saw her at the window. She can't see too well. She's almost blind. Them things about cover the eyes. What, 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 what are they called? Cataracts. She's got them now. <laughs> she's a remarkable knitter. What a scarf. Back home, they'll go crazy over a scarf like this. Dead right for Jamaica. When the temperature drops below 90, I worry about her being in the house on her own. Who's going to keep an eye on her when I've gone? Still Wednesday? On Monday, they collect the trunk, Tamba. Right, right. So it's definitely definite. I was hoping you might have had second thoughts. It's what I've always intended. And on Wednesday... Yes, rooting and retiring in the same week. You shouldn't do it all at once. It's decided. What are you going to do about the house? All in good time. Come and give your dad your big kiss. Because tonight we are going to have the damnedest best night we've had out for years. Mm. Where are we going? Mm. It's all booked. Wait till you see this restaurant. The smell of the cooking here drove me crazy when I went to book the table. We got the most exclusive table. Behind it, I saw the shrubbery. Very private. What's it called? It won't be a surprise if I tell you. And that's not the only surprise I got for you tonight, Susan. What do you mean, Dad? Oh, I'll be telling. It's a secret. You'll find out, though, over the liqueurs and cigars after the meal. I <laughs> don't have to smoke a cigar, do you? <laughs> I got enough. <laughs> See? Just about every other driver bought me a cigar today. I wish you were there, Susan. You would have been so proud of your old dad. I was almost overcome by the tributes paid me. I couldn't change my shift, Dad. It's only once in a lifetime my father retires, Susan. I'm here tonight. Cheers, then. Cheers. Nice. Mm. Are these for me? Mm-hmm. I ought to put them in some water. <laughs> what are these called? Uh, these are Lily of the Valley. Mm. And these? These are called gypsophila. Sometimes I'm called baby's breath. When your mother and me, well, Molly and me, when we got married just before I come over here, the flowers in our bouquet, these flowers. I know, Dad. They were called baby's breath. The sun was shining when I left Jumali. And when I stepped off that vessel here in England, it was so cold, so freezing cold. Wearing a suit a size too big and a hat that kept falling over my eyes. <laughs> and the smart shoes that Uncle James lent me mash up my foot bad, bad. And I was so scared, so damn scared when I arrived here in England on my own. 
You've lost weight. You look skinny. Do I? You're not eating properly. I've been waiting for tonight. Nothing the matter? No. As long as I worry about you when I don't see you. The doctors behaving themselves, not molesting you. Dad. Oh, I've heard stories about doctors and what they get up to with nurses. I don't believe all you hear. I'm all right, Dad. Honestly. You would tell me if anything was the matter. Well, it's a bit upsetting. The reason I couldn't get away. One of my patients, a really lovely woman, became very fond of her. She's dying. She might die tonight. Well. Same thing as Mum. In times of distress, Susan. Remember what you learned in Bible class? Great comfort in times of sadness. Remember the old Bible class when you and Linda were girls? In a prefab shed. A shed of corrugated iron. Eventually they knocked it down. Miss Marsh. She used to play the hymns on a honky-tonk piano. I used to get there early to meet you girls. So that I could stand outside and listen to the kiddies singing the hymns. I was always moved. It looks very nice. You always had artistic flair. You could have done anything. Anything? Oh, I had great ambition for you, Susan. High hopes of you becoming a personal secretary. I know. Uh, no more for me. Uh, more a kind of personal assistant, kind of personal secretary. A great man. You got the right temperament. You always did. I once discussed it with Mr. Cunningham. You becoming his personal secretary. You'd have an office of your own with your name on the door. I always wanted to be an SRN. With your temperament, you could become a doctor. A Harley Street surgeon, perhaps. I'll be lucky to still have a job as a nurse, the way Thatcher's butchering the NHS. Susan! That's the Prime Minister you're talking about. I will not have her name besmirched under my own roof. And I must say, I find it most astonishing coming from a woman that you should talk that way about another woman. It just makes me angry. And you make me angry when you talk like that. I don't want to be angry tonight. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I should get more angry if Linda doesn't hurry up and get here. We should be leaving for the restaurant Linda's by now. always late. Mm, carry on the coffin. The corpse is running behind trying to catch up. The amazement of it all to me is how she manages to hold down a job. A florist she works for must have the patience of Job. Her idea of timekeeping never used to be tolerated. Punctuality was taken for granted. The kids at the station. Nowadays, you the turn for work on time, they expect a bonus payment. It's shocking. It's bloody shocking. There's no excuse for it. I was never late, never late. I know, Dad. You have mentioned the fact once or twice. Not even the... That winter when... That winter when the buses were on strike, I still... Set off on foot before dawn. Before dawn. I walk in the pitch dark to the station with the snow right up to my knees, I still... It was never late. Mr. Cunningham, in his speech today, made a great point about my 100% punctuality record. He said, although I was leaving today, my exemplary punctuality record remained enduring inspiration. Now, what's that effect? It'll all be written up in the magazine. I was photographed shaking hands with a man from the GLC after the presentation. What do they present you with? This. Oh, it's very... It lights up. It has six functions and an alarm. Nice. The engraving. Mind you, a bit damn peculiar to give a man with a 100% punctuality record a watch with an alarm. Don't you think? It's the thought that counts, Dad. Precisely.
a zit suit, Dad. You look sensational. You look like an admiral of the fleet, like the Duke of Edinburgh, dressed up as Darth Vader. <laughs> God, Daddy, you look so dressed up, I feel underdressed. Linda, you are late. Oh. Mm. Daddy, what is this smell? What lady bought you this raunchy cologne, you horny wild man, you? Linda, <laughs> I said you are late. Oh, what a welcome. Well, that's a nice dress, Susan. Really suits you, you know. You should always wear that colour. Where is, um, think me what you call him? Stevie. Oh, he's just going to fill up with petrol, Daddy, and he won't be two minutes. He's so excited about tonight. Where are we going? Just about the damn best restaurant in London. Mm -hmm. So you better hurry up. I thought he might have taken the precaution of getting the petrol before. He's oh, had a busy day, Daddy. Doing what exactly? He owns three bingo shops and is negotiating the lease on another one. You know my views on gambling. Yes, we do. But I don't think Stevie will be too interested. But, Daddy, I think you'll get on so well with Stevie. You'll get on like a house on fire. Mm. I was just saying to Susan, I don't oh, like... Oh, yes, look, Daddy, you've never liked any of my boyfriends, but he's different. Don't worry. With you and boys, I'm always worried. Yeah, don't remind me. Oh, the embarrassment. <laughs> the times I nearly died. All those excuses you used to find to come downstairs in the middle of the night when I was entertaining. Is that what you called it? Mm, I just came down to make sure you got the fire on, Linda. I don't want you to catch cold. Oh, and pardon me interrupting you, Linda, but I wonder if I left the Bible in here. Oh, here it is. Your friend here, he got his feet on it. I remember Dad coming down to check the paint had dried when I was on the doorstep. <laughs> Just be careful with your clothes. It might still be a bit tacky. I only painted it last week. <laughs> Trying to keep you two on the straight and narrow is too much for one man. I don't know how you managed on your own, Dad. It's a darn mystery how I never become an alcoholic. That's because Linda drank whatever you had in the cupboard. Mm, you helped me. It wasn't just me. Well, what I never could understand was how the hell the level of the sherry kept going down even when I locked the door and hit the key. <laughs> Shall we tell him? Uh, seeing as he's going back on Wednesday, we might as well. You see, it was easy. You lock this door like this. So we just pull out the drawer like this, reach down and took the bottle. <laughs> oh, well. Here's to tonight, then. I'm ever so excited. He's even more excited when you hear the surprise I've got for you. You just wait. <laughs> the last night together in this house for all of us. So what's this surprise, then? My lips are sealed. Oh, you. You've never been able to keep a surprise. You always used to ask us to ask you what our surprise Christmas presents were, even when we didn't want to know. <laughs> What's this? Oh, Mrs. Dwyer made it. Oh, yeah. She knitted it. How old is she now? Mm, about 80. Sad. She's almost blind. She had to ask me what the colors were. Uh, is Susan all right? She, she's had an upsetting day. I don't want to talk about that. I want to get going. Yeah, well, now, listen. Do be nice to Stevie, Daddy. He's so excited about meeting you. He's going crazy to meet you. He says you've got to be the greatest. <laughs> well, I hope I don't disappoint him. If I don't come on as the greatest, just nudge me and I'll try oh, harder. Oh, Dad, you're so funny. I could eat you. <laughs> oh, that's him. This is Stevie. You're going to meet Stevie at last. This is my Stevie. <laughs> Good evening. I am Linda's father. Hi. Nice to meet you at last. I've heard so much about you. So I understand. Hello. Oh, this is my sister, Susan. Hello. Like your car. Oh, Thank it's you. got electric windows and quadraphonic sound. <laughs> oh, you can sit in the front with Stevie, Daddy, and you just flip at the sound. Sure. Nice looking woman. My wife. Linda and Susan's mother. Yes. It's a nice house. Feels um homely. I understand you live in Tooting. That's right. 
I reserve the table for eight o'clock. You familiar with Dean Skeet? Oh, well enough. The traffic on Friday. Oh, we have plenty of time. Parking is so old. I know a place. I think we ought to make a move. Oh, we're doing just fine. I it's... knew you'd both get on like a house on fire. Oh, God, Daddy, for one awful moment, I thought you were going to wear this. <laughs> Well, I've met friends of men before. But then you other hand, you may be a little nervous in meeting me. Nerves affect people in strange ways. Yes, Dad. Come on. Let's get some food down us. Oh, and the man from the GLC was there. I shake oh, hands with him on the presentation. Did you say Ah, yes, go the drink. I was wondering what had happened to the aperitifs. <laughs> for Madame. Thank you very much. And uh, oh. this is for the other Madame. Right, that's for this. <laughs> Thank you. And the perno is for. That's mine. I always find this the most agreeable aperitif on the palate. You did. <laughs> Monsieur is a gourmet. Quite. Quite. Mind you, I'm here in a count that I'm entertaining to celebrate my retirement. Yeah, I think you've already told him that. <laughs> Monsieur does not look old enough. I beg your pardon. Uh, Monsieur. Cheers, the patron TV. asks that uh, please to celebrate uh, this special occasion. You will accept the drinks from him personally. Oh. Oh, that's very civilized Thank of him. You. Perhaps he would care to have a drink on me. Add it on the bill. Oh, shit. You are ready to order now? Mm, we haven't quite finished reading the menu yet. I will return when you have made your selection. Okay. Psst. Is there anything that you particularly recommend? Everything is excellent, <laughs> monsieur, as I'm sure you know, Le Chef. Oh, I haven't chef eaten here before, but I've received the highest recommendations from Mr. Cunningham. Ah, Monsieur Cunningham, of course. A senior colleague of mine at the Stratford Depot. He was here some months ago to celebrate his silver wedding. The soup quatre champignons de la forêt, mousse à l'orange. It is a it's soup of four different flavors of mushroom, monsieur. No, 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 no. What I mean is... What is that? Ah, I think you find it's your watch, Mr. King. Oh, <laughs> the alarm. <laughs> Eight o'clock. Dead on time. Dad, 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 everybody's looking. No, Ooh, that's the yes, light. Very convenient for seeing the digits in the dark. Oh, press that one. Oh, 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 look what you've oh, done. Please stop the alarm, Dad. Here, Monsieur. Uh, thanks, all the slim. I'll do that. Oh, Monsieur, please. I will. Uh, I will return with another Perno, and then uh, <clears throat> perhaps you are ready to order your meal. I'm sorry, Dad. Sorry. Uh, nothing to worry about. <laughs> Come on, what are we going to eat? Oh, what's this, Stevie? That one. Uh, le consommé de pigeon et sa petite salade. <laughs> you speak French very well, Stevie. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. King. Stevie's uncle's a chef. So he says. I think he's more a kitchen hand. <laughs> Which restaurant? The Dorchester Hotel. Oh, I just met him. That's well. And I'm going to start with the uh, consommé whatever. Then I'd like the steak of poire. Well, as a matter of fact, Linda, I was thinking of having that, but I'm very tempted by the... <laughs> Oh, God. oh, this is very <laughs> embarrassing. Why is it bleeping again? I think you must have pushed the snooze button, Mr. King. I only got three buttons to press. It's the combination in which you push them. I wanted to go up at eight o'clock. Did you do You set the time. Look, can't you just switch it off for now? Yeah. I have not time to fully read and digest the instructions. <laughs> Look, the waiter's looking. Come on. Ah, Let's at least order right. the first course. Right. Uh, I'll have the. Uh, the Chicken, Chicken business. 
Mm, that sounds very nice indeed. Mm. A la nouvelle style, it says. Yes, I'll have that, please. I'll have uh, the chef's pâté. I'll have the consommé. Well, Linda, I, actually, I was thinking of having that. Ooh, we'll have the consommé twice, then. <laughs> you are ready to order now? Almost, almost. Mm -hmm. What about... Linda, if you had the mushroom soup, Seems rather waste if we all had the same thing. But if you had something different, we, we can now taste each other's. Right. Seems a nice idea. Variety is a spice of life. Oh, all right, okay. All right, then. So we'll have the... Um, the soup will consommé. Yeah, chicken mousse and... Um... Chef's pâté. And for main course? Oh, for me, the, the beef wellington. Oh, I know. The best wellington, monsieur, it is for two persons. I know that, man. Stevie, it is for two. Perhaps you'd like to share that with me. It's very succulent, I hear. Mr. Cunningham had it. Okay, Stevie? Okay, Mr. King. And the steak au poivre. I'll have the Dover sole. <laughs> Just plain, please. You sure, Susan? <laughs> so many concoctions and sauces. <laughs> Seems rather damn waste coming to a restaurant renowned for its authentic cooking. I wouldn't be exaggerating to say, would I, that this restaurant is almost world famous? Perhaps in Dean Street, monsieur, we do our best. <laughs> so good. I will return with a selection of vegetables. Whilst you're in the kitchen, if you can find some sort of thing or a little pin to prod this, you know, to reset the alarm. The pin, monsieur, to reset your alarm? Of course. I don't want to keep going on for a big damn five minutes. <laughs> the wine list, monsieur. Ah. We have a very... Oh, actually, Daddy, uh, Stevie would like to buy the wine. If it doesn't offend you, Mr. King, I've had a very lucky day working. And it looks like the new shop's going to go through, so... To celebrate, I'd be very Champagne! Oh. Right. <laughs> well, you can buy the first bottle. I'll get the next. Okay. I was thinking of... Dom Perignon, very cold. Dom Perignon. Yes! <laughs> Bring it in a bucket of ice if it doesn't put you with any inconvenience, hmm? Dom Perry. God almighty. You yeah, sure, boy? <laughs> it's gonna be Stevie's fourth shot. <laughs> well, when the luck is in, you just might, might as well as enjoy, enjoy it. it. <laughs> <laughs> well, Stevie says I'm his lucky mascot. <laughs> well, I'm not a great champagne drinker, as a matter of fact, but I'm acquiring the taste. This afternoon, I had enough champagne to bath in. Not your Dom Perrier, he isn't hard. <laughs> Drinking champagne is a bit bloody strange. <laughs> it always reminds me of Uncle Hero. Oh. He used to say he wouldn't touch wine even. <laughs> he had a biasedness concerning French people, which went back to when his family. <laughs> oh, Errol used to say, you can't trust the frogs. How do you know when they're stamping on the grapes? That they get out of the bucket when they want to have a wee-wee, and not the juice straight into the grape juice! <laughs> the pain, monsieur. <laughs> Terror. <laughs> if I could have peered into the future and seen what I would do with this adventure here in England, I made a life here, Mally. A life beyond dreams. And now, go back there into this restaurant and I pour the champagne and have the toast and I tell the girls. I tell them what my surprise is. And when I drink that champagne, Mally, you watch me. Because I drink to you and all. I drink to our daughters and to my going home. And I toast to you, my girl. Well, I know what I'm going to say to our girls. But I'm damned if I know what to say to you, Mally. Except. Wish she was here now, as I go out into the restaurant and tell them on my own. Uh, 
I am not a, a great speech maker. That is all right, Dad. A few things I want to say. We're listening, Daddy. <laughs> this night, here in London, England, with my daughters, the night I retire. <laughs> uh, I come from the home country in a boat full of hungry men, full of fear and optimism. 35 years ago. 1949 it was. Next week, on Wednesday, in another boat, I return to where I come from. Cheers, Daddy. Congratulations. Linda, shut your mouth. Daddy, I'm <laughs> Linda, please. Yeah, okay, well, well. This is what I want to say. Listen to me, please. I don't want to toast where I come from. Jamaica. <laughs> Not where I come from. Now we are going to. Jamaica. I want to toast where I've been for 35 years. Come on, Dad. We're listening. When I step out that vessel on that cold, windy February morning, at a lifetime ago, in a suit a size too big for me and, and shoes that mash up my foot, <laughs> a bag so old, you expect it? Words. Words to express the first of the tens of thousands who come to England at the invitation. Damn it. At the request of England. <laughs> Propelled by the ambitions of those too bound, too timid to risk. When us men alone stepped ashore into the unknown, the fear, into the land of hope and dreams, a passport of promise in England. When I saw this England, my eyes were misty with regret at what I had forsaken, what I had left behind. Friends, family, the familiarity and the land I loved. I crave the sunshine, smell, a new universe. Shiver, shiver cold. I was weighed down with misgivings. I kept my heart in my pocket on the photos and letters of your mother. And I was scared. I thought Mr. Churchill would be on the key to me this, but he was not there. <laughs> <laughs> if then, that cold February morning, that lifetime ago, if I could have peered into the future and seen what I would have done with this adventure, I never dreamed. As high as I reached here, in this angle, I never dreamed this thing would give me that golden egg. I expected castles and green fields and immediate assistance from those who promised. See, I didn't understand what they said in London. No government house accent. <laughs> the splendor of the photos. The king. That slum dirt and ice eyes and Debris and rooms what smell of disinfectant and coal and poverty all around in Stratford. And, and the rudeness and the disappearance of the friends I met on the boat on this voyage. Before you girls were born. But I made it. I made a life here. All right. Beyond dreams, mm -hmm. I found the rich England and I tapped its vein. <laughs> and I got a mortgage because I got a reliable and responsible job. I was in London transport. I studied. Before that, I swept platforms for two years. I watched the drivers. I listened to them. And I learned their secrets. <laughs> the advice that there was a need for responsible men. My attitude impressed. I was observed as a reliable and responsible and trustworthy and punctual man who caused no trouble to nobody. They said, you fit in. You adapt. I adapted. 
I got the training and I got the mortgage. And when I got it, I sent for Mary. The house, yours for all your lifetime. Decent clothes, never short of food. Every comfort and television and education. You could have been a great man's personal assistant, Susan. Linda, after a series of false starts, <laughs> a florist in the most reputable florist business, security. I regret the passing of Molly. I miss her. If she had not died, uh, I might have stayed here. I decided some months ago to retire, go back home. Mission accomplished. A life of achievement, satisfaction, and pride. Pride in my daughters. And here is the surprise. The mortgage is all paid for, not a penny's old. All paid for. Really? The last installment is paid. And Mally and I took out the mortgage. The house price was not quite a thousand pounds. And it must be worth what? 30,000 now? Perhaps more. <laughs> I'm going to live with Aunt Rose and Uncle James. I don't need a house. This is why I've had the deed of contract changed. Changed? How do you mean, Dad? I went to a solicitor and dropped this legal document. It's called a deed of gift. I want you to have the house. I want to give it to you and Susan. A half share each. Well. What do you say? Speechless. I mean, you're saying you want to give me and Linda your house? I never thought of it as my house. It's always been the family home. This is why I want you to have it, to own it and live in it. I can't believe it. Look! I, just, I can't believe it! <laughs> See? This list I put your names here. So now you are the legal owners. I signed it. Now well, I want you to sign it. Mm. Wait a minute, Dad. You worked all your life to buy that house. And now you're going to be on a pension. I think you a should... A pension and the savings. Yeah, yeah. And Auntie Rose isn't going to charge you rent, is she? That's not the point. You should reap the benefits of the house, Dad. You should sell it. 30,000 pounds. I can't go home a millionaire. Your Auntie Rose won't speak to me. <laughs> or, or rent the house. So at least you've got an extra income if you don't want to sell it. A landlord? Me? Anyway, I'd hate anybody living in my house. That's why I want you to live in it rent-free, own it, and enjoy the benefits of our work for. We could live there rent-free without actually owning it. Yeah, but look, Daddy seems as if he's made up his mind. This is ridiculous. I want you, my wonderful daughters, to have the house. It'll make me so very, very happy. This is a sudden decision. I mean, it's an emotional time, right? Retiring and moving. I think it'd be a much better idea if you just waited for a bit. It's what I've always wanted, and you will sign it! Now, listen, listen. I think it's the most amazing and kind and generous offer I've ever heard of. Oh, Dad! You're such an incredible man! I've been incredibly lucky. I come to this country, and I made a life beyond dreams. And I'm grateful. And I propose we drink a toast to this country. Irie. To England. To England. To England. <laughs> Suzanne, to England, the mother country. Oh, some mother. 
I'll drink a toast to you, Dad, but I won't drink to England. Oh, Susan, don't be difficult. I'm not. <laughs> I just don't tonight feel particularly grateful to England. Why should I be grateful? I was born here. It's my country. Well, I wasn't. I come here and I made a hell oh, of a bet I would have got my city. five years ago, Dad. How long have you got to go on being grateful for? The rest of your life? Not that England seems to hold lives too precious these days. What are you saying? Susan. What are you preaching? That this black power talk? Oh, look, I'm talking about how a woman on my ward is dying tonight because England is too mean. What oh, oh, God, I've got to do with what I'm saying. Oh, you're not looking at the world straight, Dad. It's not England you're talking about. It's some fantasy. Fantasy? Now, I don't like you getting oh, personal. Oh, it's a game. You're deceiving yourself. Susan, why don't you just shut up? Perhaps this isn't the time, Susan. Look, he asked me to. The England I see is the one that ought to be grateful to black men like you who work their asses off for Now, you leave my ass out of this. Mr. King, please, just call it out a bit. Now, you hold your tongue, boy. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm just sitting right like next that. to you. There's no need to shout. Was everything to your satisfaction? Yes. Yes. I'm sorry. Sorry. I didn't mean to cause a row. But I wasn't being personal. I was talking about a woman who... A white woman... Who I have had to watch slowly, cruelly and painfully dying tonight. What has this got to do with me? I'll tell you what. When Mum died, that's when I absolutely knew I wanted to be a nurse. It was 11 years ago. Right. Then it seemed everything that was humanly possible was done. But now I don't feel that. All the advances that have been made, and this woman will die tonight, because the money that could be spent isn't. Hospitals are being closed. I'm not, I'm not saying she's been neglected. I'm not saying she wouldn't have died anyway. But they'd closed the breast testing center, so she never had the early warning. She had to wait to get radiotherapy because of the shortage of equipment. The radiotherapy burnt her skin acute sunburn. When her relatives asked for calamine lotion, they were told to buy it. Part of the cuts. The air conditioning was switched off to save the cost of running it. She used to be exquisitely beautiful. She showed me photos once. And now, there's hardly any of her. Chemotherapy made her bald. <laughs> and she's dying tonight. Now, look, I'll drink a toast to you, Dad, but I won't drink to this country. You said how you see it. I'm sorry if it hurts you, but that's what I feel. This country doesn't care about its poor or its weak or its ill. Not really care, because that costs money. I suppose it's cheaper to just let people die. I'll never drink a toast to England. Excuse me. <clears throat> Susan, you will drink a toast to England. Or I swear to God, I will strike out your name out of this contract and not have half the house. No! Have half the house. Such ingratitude. How, how many times has one got to say thank you? Why are you offering the house anyway, you vain man? Get out of my sight. Get out. She's really going. Yeah, she is. She's gone. She's gone, Mr. King. And she's not my daughter. She's a, a whore. Listen. Don't 
be too hard on her, Dan. She's obviously very upset. But all the same, she didn't ought to be so offensive. Look, she's no, catching... No, no, Dan. Dan, I know exactly how you feel. And Susan, she can be so hurtful. The things she says. In some ways, she's not like us at all. I always thought of the two of you, she was... But you always treated us both the same, Dad. You never showed any kind of favoritism. I mean, even with this house, you better give it to both of us. The way she spoke to me... It would just have been ours in name, Daddy. It would still have been your house, the way it is now. Always there for you to come back to if you wanted. And I'm sure you'll keep popping back. And... Well, I'll keep popping over to see you. Because the thought of not seeing you so often. Hmm? You're a good girl, Linda. A good daughter. <laughs> well, I've been naughty sometimes, but... All girls are. But in your heart... In my heart? Yeah. Always. And it breaks my heart to think that because of Susan's ingratitude, other people will now live in that house where we've all been so happy. Uh, the house. Listen, if you don't have time before you go, I can arrange for an estate agent to arrange the letting of it and ensure that the rent is sent to you every month. No. I strike out Susan's name like this. You did what? And you and I sign, then the house will be yours. Well, I don't really know about legal things like this. I want you to have the house. You think you should initially each time, Dad? Hmm? Sign it. Want to be too hasty, Daddy. I want you to have the house sign it. Well, you can always change your mind. No, I would change my mind. I think I'd better initial it as well. And we need a witness. Stevie. Me. I want you to be the legal witness. Oh, if Daddy agrees. Yes, yeah, Stevie. I'm a great political signer. You don't have to be grateful, Mr. King. I think I'm going to cry. <laughs> Days of happiness. My heart is broken. I'm bleeding. Why did she do this to me? I must go out. I must breathe. Before I make a fool of myself in front of everybody. Daddy, Daddy, Daddy. Oh. No, no, Stevie, Stevie, leave him. I think he wants to be on his own for a little while. What a disastrous night it's been for him. Yeah, well, apart from how nice you were just then. We're in a contract. It's in my bag. You intend to keep it? <laughs> what do you mean? You, you sure did that well. What did I do well? The way well? you get him to sign he it. He wanted to. The state he's in. Yeah, that's why I signed it, Stevie. Because of a peculiarly mad mood that he's in, that Susan got him in. He could have walked out here with this in his pocket, got the first meth drink we met to sign it, 
crossed out our names and given the house to a complete stranger. <laughs> That's not much madder than signing away your own home. Well, he can't take it with him to Jamaica. Well, look, how long do you think he's gonna stay there? Always. You know, I can see him going back for a couple of months, maybe. But his world is here. You and your sister are all he's got. Now he's got no job no, no more. Oh, well, I don't know about that. You know, it's not much of a world, but I can't see what else he has. Now, where do you reckon he'll be? <laughs> he's probably taking a train home, sitting in the driver's cab, telling the driver about his punctuality record. <laughs> Son, you saw how vain he is. I've seen a lot of things tonight. <laughs> Take a credit card. Yes, monsieur. You and your computerized signal box, just sitting up there pressing buttons. Press another button and demolish all the stations. who spent 30 years on the main line crying. <laughs> okay, I'll uh, take him from here. Thanks. Mr. King! Here. I'm retired here. See? They gave me this. You showed it to me. Six functions. And it lights up. Who would have thought anyone can get so many working things into something so small? 
If I place it here... Soon there'll come an express mail train. See what happens. A lifetime smashed into pukes into a millionth of a second. It's a waste. Yes, a waste. You heard the things she said to me. People kill themselves on train lines. They get crushed to death under the wheels of trains. A colleague of mine told me the man. This man, standing alone on an empty platform, looked up and their eyes met. A second before he threw himself under my colleague's train. Susan never looked into my eyes when she abused me. All the things I believed in. Give me talking to you like this, but... You, what are you saying to me? You, Mr. King, you can't give your house away. Look, if you sell it and go to Jamaica with 30,000 pounds in your baggage, oh, you'd be a rich man. Life there would never be the same for you. I think you should stay here in your house with your daughters. I have only one daughter. You think she would Come mind if I... Get, we'll speak to her when we get to your home. Hasn't been a home since Manny died. I didn't know the end was so near. If I'd known so many things I'd have said. Everybody in the hospital seemed to know except me. When I asked the sister. Why didn't you tell me? She said. Couldn't you see? Mr. King? Please sit down, Mr. King. Please sit down. I'm afraid just now she passed away. It's over now. She's at peace now. I don't know what to say, Mr. King. been doing this job for 15 years and I'm still not able to deal with when a patient passes away. Susan. Yes? My Susan. She wants to be a a nurse.
Would you like some tea? The doctor. He will be here in a minute. I'll fetch you some tea while you wait. And if you'd like to see him. I want to see. Marley. I don't know what to say, Dad. Your mother's at peace now, Susan. If you want to be a nurse, you'll be a nurse. Where's your sister? She's out. I left a note at home. She could at least have been at home tonight. Oh, Dad. What on earth have you been doing? You're freezing. Staggering around a bloody shunting yard in the middle of the night. Then. Mr. King, feeling yeah. so muddled. There, I was here. Yeah, yeah. And so I've been private. sitting here waiting to go home with Stevie. How do you know what the time is? Oh, oh, watch is broken. Well, let's get this off. Yeah. Oh, take this We've been talking. Stevie. Oh, Stevie, now, is it? Used to be thinking me what's his name. I'm glad you're all right, anyway. It was a nice meal, wasn't it? Nice of Stevie to pay for it. I was talking to your father about whether it's such a good idea, him going home and all. Pardon? Whether it's a sensible idea. Stevie was saying. <laughs> yeah, what exactly was Stevie saying? This is my home here with you. With me? My daughter. You want to live here with me? I want to live in my house. Uh, this house? Well, you have a home, Linda. You have a flat of your own. Yeah, yeah. I've got a house of my own now. This house. And I think Dad will love it. With Auntie Rose and all them lot. And the summers? I mean, the winter's cold here. Old people die of cold here in England. I mean, I'm thinking about your health, Dad. I appreciate that. I but think he'd be making a mistake. And that's my opinion. Yeah, but he's my dad. So I think he's perfectly capable of making up his own mind. OK, Linda. Stop bullshit. Give him back the contract, and we'll leave him to think about it again. Give it back? I, I think I was. A little impetuous. <laughs> I don't know. For God's sake, Linda, give it to him. I was angry. But listen, you'd be leaving the house to me when you die anyway. So I can't see what difference it makes leaving it to me now. If he stays, he's got to live here. Not necessarily. You could live with old Mrs. Dwyer next door. I mean, that would be nice, wouldn't it, Dad? Keep each other company, eh? See, what I did was in a moment of madness. And I wish to withdraw the the offer. The offer? <laughs> the offer? <laughs> it's not an offer no more. It's signed, sealed, and delivered, and that's it. Get you get your hands off that! Then I swear to God, I do you Please! Me. We've had enough misery tonight. For the love of the old dad... The love of who? I can never love an Uncle Tom. You hold your tongue, girl. Please, Linda, you owe me this I much. I owe you. Anything that I am grateful for is that you taught me never to be humble like you. Humble, humble, humble. What's she saying? I don't understand what she's talking about. This house. This house that you keep going on about. I can't wait to sell it and buy somewhere decent. Because what this house reminds me of is all the years of your groveling and your gratefulness. <laughs> You were the Uncle Tom to end all Uncle Tom's, Daddy. I was ashamed of you. 
Mum couldn't bear it either. So bloody grateful, always. The gift horse to every con man who ever stepped into the street. <laughs> you gave ten bob notes to begging blind men who could see well enough to say, oh, make it a quid, Gov. God bless you, Gov. You were the only bloody idiot who was still giving a Christmas tip to the milkman who'd given up delivering milk three years before. <laughs> and when Mum said anything to you about, like, over-tipping the milky, what did you say? Be grateful. This is the only country in the world with the most reliable and punctual delivery service. Don't let, I don't want to listen to... They call to... me nigger. Don't. Then please don't. Where's your manners in my home? When they called me nigger, nigger, ha ha, bath in black ink, ha ha, what colour is it? inside is it black inside oh nigger girls they're suckers all right they go like rattlesnakes when they chuck bottles and bricks at me in the market i wanted you to react when there's whitey boys chuck stones at me and susan and they and their insults I wanted you to smash their faces in, and then I would, and Susan would, and Mum, we'd have felt something for you instead of contempt. And what was your attitude? They're ignorant, you said. Turn the other cheek, you said. Well, you turn the other cheek. And you stuck a fluorescent sign on it. Kick my nigger ass. Well, I ain't turning the other cheek. And I ain't giving this back neither. Such anger. Do you have such anger? I have never been so full of hate. Never. There were times I, I won't deny it. But I always look forward to better things. Well, maybe you should have uh, got angry. You know, when, when I first come here, sure, I behaved. I kept quiet, kept my head down. Then one day I said, uh, why am I doing this? To be accepted? I'd have been assimilated. I was losing my self-respect. So I looked at myself and I told myself the truth. You're young. I'm an old man. An old age pensioner. That's the truth. And the fool. Well, if that's what you want to see. Look, uh, I'm gonna go now. find Linda before she get into any mischief. I've always loved Susan the most. Linda resents that. 
That's why I should keep the house. Because she hates me. Because I've always loved Susan the most. No, no, I'm sorry. I came to look for you. Oh, Dad. I saw you when she died. It reminded me so I much know. of all the things you said tonight. Dad, to... please. No, no, it's true what you said. You're going to make me cry, and I don't want to. I treated you so. Bad, Susie, though. Very bad. Wish to God. Hey, you're shivering, Dad. Oh, God Almighty. Such a fool, such a blind. Cigarette. You don't smoke. I borrowed it from the night nurse. The things Linda said. So, so, so much hate. So, such so vicious. Did she? I tried to protect you from them emotions. You can't protect by ignoring them. Oh, we, we never talked about them. Remember the Bible. Turn the other cheek. They are ignorant. Ignore them, I said. I ignore too much. Did Mali hate me for it? She didn't hate me for Mali it. You told me what it was like. When you first came, those days, what you found and how you... She told me how harsh it was. And she said, you endured it with dignity. She said that? Mm -hmm. I'm going home now. Where? No, she's gone. Good night, then. Susan.
This is so done. When I go home, when I go back, will you write to me, Auntie Rose? Mm-hmm. And do you write to me, here? The house, I... She has it all. Perhaps next summer I'll come and visit you. And perhaps decide to stay. No. This is my country, Dad. I've always loved you more than Linda. London is the place for me. London, this lovely city. You can go to France or America, India, Asia, or Australia, but you must come back to London City. Well, believe me, I am speaking broad-mindedly. I am glad to know my mother country. I've been traveling the countries years ago, but this is the place I wanted to know, darling, London. This is the place for me. 